Hi, my name's Dale and welcome back to Metal Tips and Tricks, your YouTube channel dedicated to everything metal. This is part two of the Ultimate Metrology Center, Welding. I want to give a shout out to our sponsor, Metal Supermarkets, and there are more than 70 stores. When they contacted me and said they wanted to sponsor this channel, I was so excited because I know with their support, I'm going to be able to do bigger and better projects for you guys. So check them out on the web and find the closest location to you. Onto our Wiffle Tree, we have these pins that we need to get into place. And as I discussed before, I set these braces off from where the wiffle point, I should say the bessel point should be. But at the end, it actually is working out really well because instead of putting these pins right in the center, I actually got to put them over the side and I got to weld them in. So I'm hoping that's going to give me a lot more support over the long run. So we're going to weld these up. Some of the challenges of TIG welding, different thicknesses of material is the thin material isn't as much of a heat sink so it melts quickly where a thick pin like this takes a lot more heat before it melts so there's this delicate dance that you have to do when welding different thicknesses of materials and I'm gonna see how well I do on this sometimes I do really well and other times well let's just say I'm kind of challenged Using a TIG welder is very slow, but if I can keep a flat bead, I don't have to grind it so it can save me some time. The other reason I'm using a TIG welder over a MIG welder is I just want to get more time on the TIG. I just got the Lincoln and Square Wave, and it's a very cool uh, machine. I haven't done a review on it yet because I haven't used it enough to really tell you how it's working, but so far it's been working great. So I'm going to finish welding this out and come back a little bit later and we'll get it installed over here. We're here at the Kalamazoo. I just pulled it out. If you'll notice along the wall in my shop, I actually have my different machines and they can pull out and be brought to the center of the room so they're easier to use. On the side here, same thing with the welders. This Kalamazoo has been an excellent, excellent bandsaw, except for cutting angles. Well, unfortunately, I have to cut some angles right now. And I'm gonna show you how I set this up. They did some interesting things on their design. Is to get the longest cut here, they have moved the back jaw of the vise as far back as possible. The disadvantage is when it's at an angle, I run into, of course, the guides. And we don't want that. 
So what they did is they actually just drilled another set of holes and we're gonna just simply take it apart and move the vise forward. I will say it is very inconvenient to do this, but at the end of the day, it's better than not having a bandsaw. And most of my cuts probably, you know, I have to be honest, I've never cut an angle on this one. So uh, you don't use it very often, but when you do, you have to have it just like today. Have you ever noticed that you start a project or you develop something for a machine like I have this stop and it's really super crude, not very sexy, but it works. So I have no desire to fix it except for it's ugly. These I've got uh, one, two, three, eight, twelve of these to do. And uh, the great thing is about cutting these this way is I just pull it out, flip it over, and I'm saving a lot of material to make this happen. I want to warn you guys, I have a really a coarse blade on here. And one of the dangers with a coarse blade is when this is cutting is that tooth can hook right onto there. And you want to be very careful that that doesn't happen. Um, that's another reason I'm cutting it flat. One thing, I can't do a 45. But you want to be careful if you're cutting materials that are thin, flat with a coarse blade you're gonna have some problems because that blade has the potential to just get in there and grab, and what it does is it's just gonna take your teeth right off. So just a little warning there. Boy, that's a nice, nice cuts. Got some deburring, of course, but let's keep cutting. Now on to the next task of getting these welded up. I'm not sure if this base really needs the gussets, but I'm gonna put them in anyway. They're gonna serve to also help in, help hold the panels that are gonna be put in here. These are set up, they're eighth inch thick and about six inches long on their longest side. And I'm gonna hold them back about three quarters of an inch from this front. We're gonna hold it in place with a magnet Magnets for me are kind of a necessary evil. I don't like using them. Sometimes they'll actually cause your electrical arc to wander. It can bend your wire when it's coming out of your welder. It can cause you some little problems. But when it comes to holding something, they can hold it really quick and square and you don't have to battle with it. I'm going to only weld on the back of this, and the reason I'm doing that, when I put the sheet metal panels in here, I don't want the welds to get in the way, and like I said, I think this will hold just fine.
this is the end of part two. Part three is making the side panels. If you like this video, let me know in the comments. Also, give me a thumbs up and share with your friends. Until next time, go out in your shop, build something cool. Thanks.